Hi everyone, uh, my name's Steve Perkins. Uh, I work for Becker. Uh, Becker is a multidisciplinary engineering consultancy firm. We have about uh, 3,300 people across 20 offices uh, across the Asia Pacific uh, region. Um, being employee owned is really important to us. We aren't controlled by anyone. You can't own the company if you're not an employee. About 40% of our staff um, own, own the stock of the firm. We're really excited to have this opportunity today to be part of this event with uh, All Things Connected and, um, and Singapore IoT. Uh, it's so important to have really good partners. Things are changing so fast. Nobody knows everything. And so to, to work collaboratively with people who are well connected, is, I think is important um, for anyone who wants to um, deliver projects well. So what, um, what I want to touch on today is we're going to touch a little bit around COVID response, but more importantly, strategy and, and developing a, a solid approach. See, today, there's, there's two perspectives people are trying to think about. They're trying to think about how do I deal with COVID? How do I make people comfortable to come into my office um, and they're comfortable that it's a safe and productive place to be. But also, what technology should I be doing for the future? The nature of work is changing. The nature of buildings is changing. And buildings inevitably, even before COVID, we see a huge move over to, um, over to activity-based working, over to offices being less desk farms and more a place that people come for mentoring and collaboration and um, to share and to learn that's going to get accelerated. And so what technology support that? So you've got these two things that you're trying to balance. Um, and so what's important is to have a strategy, right? And it's hard to have a strategy because we're inundated by ideas. There's so many bright, shiny things that come to us every day. People saying, well, I've got this new solution. There's a new technology that will be perfect for you. And it's very hard without, a, without a, a solid strategy to work out whether it fits in with your overall plan. And unfortunately, we do um, meet with clients who are disenchanted with smart buildings because they've adopted some technology and it wasn't right for them and they didn't see changes in behaviors. They didn't see adoption that was positive and therefore they wonder, well, is the smart building thing a real thing? And often it's just a mismatch. So we want to avoid that. So how do we do that? Well. Ironically, the first thing that you do in order to think about smart building technology is don't talk about technology. Stop thinking about technology. When we meet with clients, we say, this building is for people, it's not for the technology. So let's identify who all our stakeholders are, the tenants, the facility operators, the courier person who comes in and needs to deliver something and visitors and neighbors. Let's understand how do they interact with our project? How do they interact with the built environment? And then when we talk to people and we interview them, you hear about the pain points and the friction and the, the poor guy on the concierge desk saying, someone came in for as a visitor for a meeting and they didn't have ID and I couldn't let them in. And then they were angry and then the tenant was upset. And you And when you distill all of those opportunities to improve down from all of the stakeholders, you, re you can distill that down and say, aha, here are 10 things that if we could use technology to solve that problem, it would be better. And then once understanding what your problem cases are, what would make the building successful? What solutions would help you meet your original goal when you thought about building your building? Then you can think about technology. And then we can say, okay, we know what we need to solve because we heard it from people and we understand that they needed it. Now let's evaluate the technology options that suit those problems. And then we can then we can go ahead and implement them. Now one can end up with a large list of potential projects that one of, of potential solutions. And so in order to distill them down, it's often important to look at it from a wide range of perspectives not just the economic payback, but is it meeting your social perspectives? Tenants and buildings have a, obviously their desire is to make their staff happy and have strong staff productivity and retention. And retailers want people to come in and stay in their store. And so th they also have to meet their carbon footprint um, um, targets. Um, so look at all of those things. And often the things that we'll recommend people adopt are those solutions that are solving more than one solution. And, and touching on multiple perspectives so that you're getting maximum benefit 
from the from the solutions that you can afford within your budget to implement. So given that perspective and thinking about things through that framework, let's just briefly look at some of the technologies that we're looking at with COVID and say, how does it fit in terms of both long, short-term and long-term outcomes that might be part of you and, and, our, and, and our other clients' long-term needs? Oh, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, one more thing I should just touch on. The benefit of all of these systems is useful by themselves, but it's when you bring them all together, so each system can benefit from the knowledge of the next, that's when you really get um, a powerful solution. Um, this is a current, this is an integration diagram from a, for a, a business park building we're working on at the moment. And each of those lines is a, is a dedicated integration solution that we've defined and, and gone through and said, what data not, that needs to be shared? Not share everything with everything. That's nonsense. You're just expensive and you have too much data. Understand what you need, which systems can benefit from, from other systems. Would the meeting room media system benefit from the occupancy system telling it that there's people in the room or not? Could do. Right? These sorts of integrations. So when you're pur purchasing technology, it's also really important to say, is it supported by, uh, by open protocols? Is it working? Is it going to work with all my other systems in the long term? And so by adopting um, open protocols and standard industry approaches, you're far more likely to find as you incrementally add systems that it's easy to tie them together to get the real value. All right, so now we're going to we're just going to look at some um, some solutions for coronavirus that you you've all um, no doubt heard about. So from an engineering perspective, the key things we think about are stop people touching things, right? Got to reduce the need to touch things because that's a primary um, infection path. Can we control how people move? Can we stop them all bunching together? Where clients say, "Hey, I have a team A and team B, and I don't want them all in the lift together." Can we, do we have technology for that? Um, it's very interesting how many people um, are coming back to us who said before, I don't wanna invest in um, indoor air quality sensors. I don't see the value. Coming back and saying, oh, we'd really like, we think that's great. We'd like to see that in our project. And we say, well, you know, you can't measure viruses and things. And they say, no, no, it's not that. It's our all our stakeholders now are very focused on environmental quality and they want now they care more broadly about what's the chemical volatile organic compound levels in the air what are the particulate matters in the air i care about my my health and now i care much more about environmental quality so they want to monitor and report and then finally tools to manage safe distancing so these are all things that are being adopted um, but we should look at them through short and long-term goals so touchless interaction, there's a whole suite of, of these things to allow you to open doors, call lifts, get your coffee, um, get through the turnstiles. And so we encourage clients to say, what fits in with your long-term strategy? So if you're a commercial office building, your key thing as a landlord is to have delighted tenants. Delighted tenants won't be so fussy about plus minus a couple of percent on rent or ongoing expenses if employees love the building. And so things like facial recognition are, are a very strong trend that, that is happening now to allow people to whisk themselves into the building without ferreting around in their purse for um, their phone or their RFID tag. And so clients will say, okay, that's a solution that not only is touch free, but it also fits in with my long-term goals of tenant experience because tenant experience was my number one goal. However, if you're a government agency, probably your number one um, thing that you want to achieve is lowering operating cost and reduce the pressure on the public purse of your operation. And so you may choose other technologies that better fit with those long-term goals because COVID won't be with us forever. And so we want to make sure as well that these things are going to fit in with our long-term wellness and health goals and other objectives that we want when we say what is important in the smart building solution. Um, smart people movement's a good example. So um, hands-free visitor management system, seeing lots of adoption. Um, use of mobile devices for visitors and landlords um, as security credentials to work on um, security tenstiles, to work with um, lift destination control. Um, 
Lift destination control, which many of you will be familiar with, that's the system where you tell the system what floor you want to go to, and it tells you which lift to get into in order to shorten your travel time. Well, you can program those things to do lots of other things that you might want under COVID. You can say, these people are in team A and these people are in team B, you don't allocate them the same lift and the car and the system will never put them together. Um, similarly, you can, um, you can say how many people you want in the lift car and control that. There's a whole lot of ways of controlling people flow through using these standard systems that traditionally we just put them in because when we did, it improved lift performance quality by 15%. Now they can solve multiple things. So again, it's thinking broadly and say, what solves short term, what solves uh, long term? Slightly off topic, but I think it's worth touching on this um, dealing with indoor environmental quality and dealing with the virus. A lot of chatter out there and I encourage everyone to go back to the experts. So the experts in these areas are, um, are organizations that have been around for 100 years like ASHRAE and like SIBZ. Uh, in Singapore, there's some excellent guidance notes out from the Building Construction Authority and NEA and Ministry of Health. And if you take all of what they have to say and you distill it down, there's some recurring themes around the things that, that um, one should consider in your air conditioning system to minimize the potential for airborne um, contaminants uh, to be circulating within the building. Um, this is a very techy slide, I'm afraid. But the reason I want to show it is there's several things in here that also overlap with clients' long-term other goals. Um, for example, this thing here called bipolar ionization is a technology that sterilizes the air. But it also removes volatile organic compounds, which are the chemicals that are coming off furniture and carpet and, and paint and, and finishes. And so clients that say, I really care about wellness and I really care about air quality and I want my building to get a well, a high well rating, we'd say, well, okay, if you do um, bipolar, you'll, it'll help you with COVID, but it'll also help you with these other aspects where there are other technologies like UVGI, which are more, which are more narrowly focused around sterilization. So again, you can, when you think, think about COVID response, think what also fits in long-term with what you also want to achieve long-term. Safe distancing, video analytics vendors are flat out putting in place technology and upgrading existing systems to allow landlords and tenants to um, help enforce social distancing, uh, do people counting, check whether people are wearing their face masks or just holding their phone in front of their mask and trying to try and pretend. All these things are happening now. And we encourage clients saying, great, think about that. But at the same time, let's make sure it does the long-term things. Make sure that it's doing intrusion protection, that's automatically reading all your cameras. Because let's face it, no one's looking at 90% of the cameras in your building. No one is, right? right? There are so many of them. Most people are using surveillance to find out what happened after the fact, not what is happening now. So video analytics, by, looking, by using pattern recognition, allows the system to identify behaviors. Like if there's a car, that's in the truck dock after 11 o'clock and somebody gets out of it and is loitering, then send a message to security to come around and talk to them and say, hey guys, what's going on? Why are you here? So one wants to make sure that you broadly get short-term and long-term solutions when you buy a solution and you don't just focus now and potentially buy something that doesn't serve you long-term. Um, similarly, um, data analytics. So. Putting in IoT sensors embedded in lights is, a, is taking off. Lots and lots of new commercial office towers are now adopting in part or in whole um, IoT smart lighting in order to give um, detailed occupancy pictures to certain types of tenant, in particular co-working operators and 24-hour op uh, people are using their space 24 hours like a lot of banking and finance. They're putting it in because it gives them workplace analytics, but it also helps with um, social distancing. So they're thinking, again, multiple solutions when they're buying now and not just for the current challenges that we have. And so that's, that's all I had to share with you, really. Just keep a long-term view. Think about people first, think about the needs, talk to the people, write them down. And only once you've got a clear problem case defined, then go ahead and say, okay, what technology do I want? And have I thought about short-term and long-term 
uh, problems when I've come to look for solutions. Thank you.